speed. Um, so it's interesting how life changes as you progress. Um, and actually planning and setting your goals is a huge part of that. So a lot of what we're going to talk about is related to business, but it also does translate into real life. Um, gentlemen, pleasure to meet you, Jerome, uh, Julian. Uh, real quick, um, just want to get a little bit about who you are. Um, obviously, Julia kind of touched on that a little bit with the introduction, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, the company and what you, where that you work for currently or, or, or are involved with the business that you're involved with currently. Um, and then uh, let us know what's your favorite, what was your favorite class in high school and your least favorite class in high school? Uh, Julian, you were up first. Oh, uh, always, I don't know why they always put me first, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> she introduced you last. I figured I'd try to mix it up a little bit. Okay, well, hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to uh, to listen to us and, and try to be uh, better and what, what's coming to you guys. Um, I'm a former tennis professional. Um, I'm originally from Argentina. I came here to, to the United States with um, a full tennis scholarship and I ended up staying here. So my journey has been from going from all over the, you know, being a professional tennis player, traveling around the world, living, being, living in Europe, in Africa, in Australia, many different places, uh, doing different things. Uh, but tennis was always my main source of uh, income and uh, educational and all that. So that taught me a lot of things. Also the traveling taught me a lot of things. Um, now, what I do now is I'm, I have three online businesses. I have also a retail business uh, and also I'm a, a director of tennis and fitness at a club in Key Biscayne, Florida. Uh, that's that's an overall pretty much what I have done in the past 30 years uh, And that's pretty much it and I like to share all my different experiences and, and all my amazing great incredible failures so <laughs> So we got you guys don't do the same, but that's pretty much what it is Awesome, and uh, in school. Uh, what was your favorite subject and your least favorite subject? I didn't have many. I mean, I, I failed pretty much in all of them. I hated school. I just oh, wanted wow. to be a professional tennis player. Uh, by my, <laughs> my, my favorite uh, subjects were geography and uh, history. Uh, and I have a major in geology and geography and a minor in marketing and sales. So from the University of Massachusetts in, in Massachusetts. Awesome. So, yeah. All right, Jerome, uh, she introduced you first, so I called in you last. It's not personal. Talk to me, man. Same question. A little bit about yourself, your journey, and um, what did you love in high school? What, you didn't, what did you not care for as much? Perfect. My name is Jerome Dees, Jr. Very excited to be here with you guys. I live in San Jose, California, born and raised in Oakland, California, which is not typically something you smile about if you know the area. Uh, growing up, there weren't a lot of opportunities that I saw. And part of my nature, part of who I've developed into is someone who just wants to help people, whatever form that takes. I've been lucky enough that through networking and selling, I found a way to connect whatever it is I'm selling or pushing to those people that I'm working with and really just adding value for the people around me. I currently have my own company, Smart Selling Guru. I do a lot of workshops across the United States. Last year I spoke in Tennessee and in New Orleans and in Sonoma. Being able to get on stage and just share my passion has been amazing. In addition to my own company, Smart Selling Guru, I also work for a company called Wise Sons in San Francisco. It's a Jewish deli, and I act as their sales director. So I get to sell food, eat food, while also living my best life and my passion on the side, which has uh, been a nice, nice journey for me. In terms of subjects, I hated art with a passion in high school. I cannot draw a straight line to save my life, and that's okay because it's not something I'm using. In terms of favorite subjects, computers were still new uh, when I was in high school, which was late 90s, early 2000s. So I loved my computer class, really delving into that. That in history, I really liked learning about other leaders, different cultures, and hopefully not making those same mistakes that we've made in the past. Awesome. Um, and it's funny because art was actually my favorite uh, subject in high school, so I don't know how well we'll get along if we were <laughs> kids in high school back then. Um, so talk to me. I mean, what you described a little bit about your professional role, 
Um, looking back at who you were, let's say at 16, is this what you envisioned for yourself back then? Or is this just something that came up as you evolved? You know, I was lucky enough to have really good mentors growing up. And although I wasn't sure why I wanted to do it, I definitely knew that I wanted to get some sort of psychology degree. That I wanted to help people. There was an organization that came into Oakland that did summer programs and had an internship program I participated in. And one of those leaders, her name was Sherry Craig. I'll never forget her. She had a psychology degree and I wasn't sure what that meant, but she was awesome and I was going to be awesome. So I had to get that degree. So I knew that I would go through school. I knew that was the way out. Uh, did I think I'd be selling food? Not so mm -hmm. much. Uh, did I hope that I'd be able to travel around and help people? Absolutely. And it's um, definitely been one of my proudest achievements to be able to do that, uh, both on a small scale and a grand scale. Because for me, I've learned that it's not how many followers you have, but how many people I get to impact and change their lives. I love that. The, 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 the difference between just followers and impact is a massive one. Uh, Julian, can you, would you care, care to share with us? I know, you know, you said even in high school, tennis was a passion. It still is. And it, it still is something that provides um, revenue. But uh, everything else that you've gotten involved with in your journey, was that kind of expected or did it just kind of develop? Uh, I, I think the journey of life, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. And most of you guys, the high school uh, kids that you're listening to this, uh, uh, the journey of life is an amazing thing. Most of you are just starting with that journey. Uh, because right now you're living with your parents and everything is pretty much structured and, and you know what to do and all that. And if, not, if you don't know what to do, they tell you what to do. Uh, but I think what I, what I try to tell everybody is it's find your passion, which finding your passion is it's, it's something that's very difficult. Uh, and the most important thing when you're young is it's see what you like at that specific age and try to do different things, try different things and see what, because the road, of li the road of life will take you to different ways and, you know, will take you to the right, to the left, up and down. They're, they're gonna, you're going you're gonna to have walls to climb, bumps to go over, big holes to jump over. And if you don't try the different things that you're curious about, uh, you will never know what's your passion. Uh, it's very difficult to define. Sometimes I tell my kids, I mean, it's very dif difficult to define what you want to study in college when you turn 18 or 19 you know it's it's who knows you know what i mean i mean you're, you're just making a decision for what you like that specific time but as time evolves like like jerome says it's it's you got to be evolving and changing and growing you know so uh i think that's just signal just went off uh probably is that uh that okay never mind no, so <laughs> Yeah, so so it, it's just part of the growing and trying different things, and and you know, let let, let life take you to to whatever you know you want to go, and then explore. Never be afraid to see what's in the other side of the wall. You know, don't stay in your comfort zone. Explore, take a risk. You know, challenge yourself. Uh, because if not, you will never really grow as a person and as a business person. And as a, I wish I could have done that when I. Well, I know that when I was 16, 18, or 20, or 25, or 30, you know. <laughs> so it, it's part of growing up and, and then uh, evolve and, and finding your passion. You know, my passion was always sports and tennis. Tennis taught me a lot of things about, you know, tennis is more like life. You know, you walk into a tennis court and it depends on you if you're going to win or if you lose. And you only learn when you lose and when you fail. And then you got to go back there and start working on your weaknesses and try to get better every single day and, and you will lose again and, and you have to get, you know, get up again and, and keep pushing forward. And that's the way it is, you know, it's, it's never when you fall, get ready to get up and keep pushing forward and, and, and failure is part of the, you know, the journey. So that's pretty much. Awesome. Then I, I, I wanted to kind of stay on that theme, right? Because you mentioned a lot of failures early, right? So I do want you to speak about what you would consider to be one of your greatest wins, but also tell us about one of your failures and the lesson that you learned from that. Well, I had many failures. I mean, from failing, meaning uh, deciding when I was, when I turned 18 and, 
either going to play full-time professional tennis or I was offered all these different scholarships to come and study in the United States. Uh, and I choose that one where some of my friends, they decided to go and play professional and they did much better than I, I mean, professionally they did great where I ended up going for education and knowledge and also use my tennis skills. And, you know, I wish I could have done, you always want to, you want to do what you have, uh, you haven't done. So, uh, that was part of, you know, one of my, I, I, I wouldn't call it a failure. It's more like a regret, uh, but I'm not, I mean, I'm very grateful that I have a, a college education and I, the experience of going to college was, you know, one of the best I ever had in my life uh, besides playing professional and traveling. But, um, you know, it, that's one, one of the failures when I was young, then growing up, you know, uh, losing $2 million in a business adventure. Uh, you know, those, those hurt, you know, uh, having the wrong partners in different business entrepreneurships that I did, uh, those were part of the learning process, but also, you know, there were failures that would I have done differently, probably, but if you don't, if you don't do it, you will never know. So, is the catch 22. So, uh, you know, uh, having the right partners is very important and uh, having everything clear on paper, it's also very important, you know. Oh man, it's, it, you said that it hurt and you said you lost $2 million. That hurt me to hear that. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, I mean, most of that money, it wasn't mine. Uh, you right. know, it, it was uh, from investors and, and, and partners and all that. I was, you know, it was divided in different, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 you know, yeah, <laughs> it hurt. It hurt very much. And, you know, it was one of the most stressful moments in, in my life, I would say, you know. Yeah. Um, so Jerome, uh, same, same question to you, man. Uh, in your professional, obviously, development, wins and losses, what would you say is one of your most significant wins? And what would you say was one of your most impactful losses that taught you one of the greatest lessons? Yeah, for me last year, I set a goal early in the year or uh, maybe in December before I wanted to speak at six conferences last year. I didn't care what they were. I didn't care what I was speaking at. It just, I wanted to get out there. I wanted to promote my brand and, and get up on a stage. And I was very lucky to find six conferences that I spoke at or attended over six weeks, which was quite the whirlwind. We're flying back and forth and I was able to take my wife with me, which has always been part of my plan that we would do this together. So that was very nice to go to New Orleans and part of the conference was a parade down the middle of the city, which was very exciting to be a part of. Uh, so for me, hitting that goal, achieving, being able to speak at those conferences and get out there, uh, it made me very happy to be able to set that goal and then to see it through, through the consistent efforts and actions and reaching out to people uh, and getting out there. Uh, for me, in terms of failure, uh, two jobs ago, I applied for promotion six different times, and every single time I was denied for it. And it, it started to impact me emotionally because, you know, you work hard, you get promoted. That's what I was always told. But one of the lessons I learned, and, and I hope you guys take this away, is you never know as much as you think you know. And we also need to be very aware of who we are and what we're putting out. It wasn't until I asked one of my supervisors, you know, why am I being passed over? What have I done? Um, that my attitude wasn't great at times. And I like to think that it's great now, but at that point, some of the people that I worked with, I didn't treat very well. And some of the people that were equals with me that had been promoted, I didn't feel real good about that because they got the job I should have had. So I didn't treat them the best. And, and now I know looking back that you never know where life's going to take you. You really should treat everybody as well as possible. And not just for selfish reasons, but the more good you put out there, I personally believe the more you get back. Uh, so for me, it definitely hurt to be passed over. I know now that I wasn't ready for those promotions and there was a reason for it, uh, but it, it definitely burned at the time and uh, almost made me want to give up. But I'm glad that I stuck with what I was doing, continued to work my butt off and uh, get that promotion, not with that company, but with another one, because sometimes you have to move to the side to go up a little. 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can I add something to uh, Jerome's point? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, for 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 you guys, for for the high school kids, it's in this world you have two different levels of of, of work. When you work for someone, you work in a company and you have a boss and you have many bosses on top of you, and you have very limited decision making and 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 it all depends that it regardless how well you do your job it's how the other people see it on top of you and sometimes you're working your butt off and you're thinking you're doing the right thing and all that and then they don't appreciate it you know what i mean and and you you reach your goals you you reach your financial targets and everything and you're sitting there why not me and and Going back to Jerome, I mean, that's, that's the way the corporate world it is. You know, it doesn't matter how, how good you do your job. Next day, they change your boss and they don't like you and they want to put their best friend on it and you're out of work. And what have you done wrong? Most, most likely nothing, but that's the way the corporate world, world works. Then you have also the entrepreneurship where you become your own boss which is a complete different dynamics. You know what I mean? You're on your own boss. You have to manage your money. You, you, you have to wear multiple hats from creating products, selling products, networking, doing pretty much everything. And it's, 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 it's a brutal dance, but it's also a beautiful dance, you know, to, to be an entrepreneur. And the same thing as, as working in the corporate world. I always come, I mean, you know, and, and I have the pleasure to do, to do, to have both work in a co corporate world and also have my own personal entrepreneur, entrepreneurship uh, businesses. And I always come to my corporate world thinking today could be my last day. I don't know. They changed my boss. They don't like me, whatever, for whatever reason, I'm out of it. So I always have that mentality when I come to my office work and you guys have to, you know, learn from that, that sometimes it's not about you but it's about them that you don't have your job or they don't appreciate your performance or how good you are. And, and sadly, it is the way it is. And, and we, as, a, as an employee, we can change that. I mean, we can argue, but they will say, that's a door. If you don't like hmm. it, you can go. And, and I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure Jerome has been through that quite <laughs> a bit, you know, <laughs> so. I think anyone over 23 has been through that at least once. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, but there is something that I wanted to kind of uh, piggyback on that, right? Because you spoke about how you don't really control your destiny um, when you are an employee as much as you would like to. Um, and one of the questions that has come in from one of our teachers, Ms. Brown, was um, in today's uh, environment with the pandemic and everything, people are making a lot of changes to their lives and their businesses. So you can't necessarily control the employee side of things, but both of you kind of have both, right? You, you have a regular paycheck, but you have your own aspirations as well. Yeah. Um, how are you adjusting to what is considered the new normal? Uh, Jerome, you want to start or I'll start? Uh, I'll jump in there. It's, it's been tough. Uh, a lot of what I was doing towards the beginning of the year, late last year was in-person workshops and getting out there and meeting people and shaking hands. And those are all things that we just do not do right now. And doing some of that virtually has been interesting because not everybody has the same skill set when it comes to online and how to present yourself. And I have learned, I mean, I wish you guys could see it. I have a whole garage over there, but I feel like I have good lighting here and I've set up my background. And so there's been a lot of adjustments there from a work perspective, selling food and a lot of that food being catering to businesses that aren't operating. We had to change our whole model to grocery deliveries and getting stuff to people's homes. But being aware of what was going on and being nimble, we were able to do that within a few days. And we went from zero orders to 150 orders, which is a ton because we have three locations. Um, so it, in being mindful of what was going on and being adaptive, we were able to pivot, which was good, but it's definitely been stressful. I'm very grateful to still have a job. I'm very sad for those who don't have a job. So there's tons of emotions right now that uh, you typically don't have if you're nine to five, just getting the work done that has uh, been interesting to navigate to say the least. Um, Great point. Julian. Yeah. How, how many kids do we have on, on, on online right now? 
Uh, I'm a little over 30. Oh, perfect. 35. Okay, great. So to all, you, all of you guys, um, I'm going to give you first the bad news, and then I'm going to give you the awesome news. So here's the, here's the, 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 the green news. Uh, you, you, I mean, we're, we're going into one of the greatest, uh, we can call it recessions, depressions, whatever it is. I mean, we have over 40 million people unemployed here in the United States. One every five employees right now or employee people are out of work which is unprecedented in my, in, my, in my lifetime and your lifetime and everyone who's listening here. Uh, so those are the bad news that it's gonna be very difficult to find jobs and all that. But here are the great news that when, after every crisis, there are immense opportunities. I mean, incredible opportunities. And that's what I always talk to my employees saying, guys, these are the, now they're, we're gonna have the greatest opportunities. How it's gonna be the new world that we're gonna live in? I mean, what are the, gonna be the new norms? What can we create where people will be interacting differently? Now, uh, is it gonna be old Zoom classes? Are people gonna go, go, go back to work? Are, are, are we gonna go back to restaurants? Are we gonna go back to the movie theaters? If not, what's gonna be different? And those are the unprecedented circumstances after a, a, a big crisis where the fresh minds, uh, the dreamers come, come, come over and say, okay, we should do this now. Let's try this, something different. And, and here are the greatest opportunities that we might have in a lifetime. You know what I mean? Because we don't know what's gonna be tomorrow, the week after, or, or back in August when we go back to school. So if you guys can start thinking about it, how is it gonna be? and create a business plan. And, and I can show you how to do a business plan and put it together. And then we should try to do this differently because now it's gonna, I'm, I'm sure teachers, um, professionals, in this pandemic has hit every single aspect of our lives. Every single uh, job, every single uh, manufacturing job has, and I'm, I'm sure everyone here, it's, it's knowing they don't know what to do what's going to happen in a week or so so if you guys can come up with with ideas it doesn't matter how crazy they are because we don't know what's going to be and and everything starts with an idea with a with a, with a vision and and then the next step is putting it together on paper and then go and try to sell it and jerome can tell you that it's life is about selling and marketing that's it from the moment you're born your crime, you're selling yourself because you wanna eat, you wanna go to the bathroom. When you're growing up, when you turn 15, 16, you're begging your parents, you're crying to your parents because you want the brand new iPhone 12 or 75 or whatever it is, the number is now. <laughs> so all those things, you always, you have those skills knowing how to sell. So if you have an idea, you can set, and if you go to the right platforms nowadays, I mean, there are many, so many different platforms that you can pitch an idea. Uh, we can change the world. You guys can change the world, can make this world a better place for all of us. Uh, and I'm going crazy, tell all my, my, my employees, please, let's, let's, let's start writing ideas. What, what can we do? How is it gonna be the new norm? Are we going back to, to, to movie theaters? Are we going back to concerts? Are we going back to uh, watching football, uh, going to stadiums? Nobody knows. So now is when is the perfect time to come up with life-changing ideas for generations to come, okay? So I'll give you an example, and, and I don't know if you guys, probably you guys don't know, but before Netflix, it was a place called uh, Blockbusters. I don't know if you guys probably, you guys don't remember because you were too young, but and before uh, streaming online, there was a, a VHS. Uh, it, it was like a big break <laughs> that you have to stick in. <laughs> and, I don't think they've can, ever seen one of those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you have to, you can go to Blockbusters and rent a movie and take it to your house and you watch it and you bring, bring it back. The story goes that Blockbusters has been around, it's been, it was a company, it was on, on over, what, 137 countries. It was, everybody watched videos and movies from, from all over the world. Then Netflix come, comes up and it starts going by mail, sending you DVDs. DVDs, it used to be like a CD player, but you can watch movies on a DVD, it wasn't a VHS. 
but you can Google it and see what's a VHS and a DVD. Uh, so you start, and Blockbuster said, forget about it. Who, who is Netflix? Nobody. I mean, that, no, forget about them. We keep, we keep, you know, sending people to our stores all over the world and then, record, you know, getting the DVDs and, and, and VHS. As time goes by, it's, you know, Netflix start coming stronger and stronger and Netflix comes up with the idea. Why don't we start streaming movies? Blockbuster says, who will watch a, a movie on TV or, or stream it on TV? Who will, you know, nobody cares about that. So short story long, I mean, long story short, Blockbuster is gone. Netflix, it's, it's here and it's going to be here forever. They come out with a brilliant idea back then and they change it completely. And you can go back to all the greatest companies right now, from Amazon to Apple. They started with a crazy idea. And sometimes if it's too crazy, it's probably a great idea too. So <laughs> it's all up to you guys to come up with great, idea, great crazy ideas and then see if we can make this world a better place for all of us. That's an awesome answer. Jerome. Uh, any insight and from your perspective that you'd like to add to that? I have found in my career the most success by just letting people express themselves and share their ideas. Uh, the company I'm with now, my catering manager is brilliant and I am really just riding her coattails and she had all these great ideas, but she wasn't really being listened to. So it's been exciting just to let her free and to support her. So yeah, if you have something, speak up, do something with it. Um, it is amazing how many jobs exist today that weren't even options as we were going through high school. Um, the Ubers and the DoorDashes and yeah. the other strangers. Like it, it truly is amazing that if you have something, give it a shot. Um, you will fail. We've all failed. I failed more times than I like. But don't look at it as failure. Look at it as, hey, I learned another way not to do it and try again um, and keep pushing because they, yeah. you're right. Someone on this call could have the next big thing that, you know, 10 years from now, yeah. they're all about and I'm having to have them teach me about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if may I add, add something to that, I'll, I'll give another example. I went to um, uh, a coworker of mine. He's, he's young. He's on, on his uh, mid twenties and all that. And he has his whole house connected to Alexa. Alexa, mm -hmm. obviously, is the speakers in the in the you know speakers on the bathroom. And and he started. I said, "What are you? Who are you talking to?" I mean, he was talking to himself. And I said, "No, I'm talking to Alexa. Who's Alexa? <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, turn on the television. Alexa, turn on the lights. Alexa, play music. Alexa, play this music." And one of the things that I found that for you guys, the the young entrepreneurs, it it will be ideal. It's we're moving into a new world of artificial, artificial intelligence, you know, AI, AI. And I think it will be, and we're not going back. We're moving forward, you know, with Siri, with Alexa, with Google. I don't know what's the, the how do you call the Google um, app? Echo? Yeah, exactly. So it will be great for you guys to have a, a, a service provider, how to teach old people how to use all these different devices. And you can install them in their houses and tell them, okay, we can install Alexa and, and you can turn on the lights wirelessly from your phone. You can speak to the speaker. And, uh, because, I mean, nowadays the, the, we have these, these um, the, the old people, you know, they, they, they have, maybe they're handicapped. They can really walk that much to turn on the lights or, or things like that. And if you, guys, if you guys can provide that service where you can set up Alexa on this in their homes and, and have everything interconnected and they can control by just speaking to the, to, to Alexa or, or to Siri. I think that, that that's a brilliant idea because I mean, the, the, the generation in between 50 and, and 75, they're completely out of the loop. I mean, they have no clue how to use that. I mean, every time I tell my mom, yesterday I was talking to my mother and said, she was complaining that WhatsApp wasn't working properly. So I said, why don't you check and, and, and do an update? How do I do an update? She, she has no clue whatsoever how to do an update on, on, on an Android phone. So maybe being a service provider and, and, and teach the, the older generation how to use Alexa, how to use Siri, how to set up your smart home um, by plugging the different devices, uh, the thermostats, uh, 
and all those things. I think it will be a great, brilliant idea for you guys. And, and uh, it, that will be easy to do, you know. You're right. It's, it's a little scary how interconnected everything is. I just yeah. told our Alexa to play my podcast the other day and it started <laughs> playing, which threw me off a little bit. <laughs> it was great, but I, I wasn't ready for it. So you're, you're right. There's yeah. some behind the scenes that I like to think I'm a little younger than not, but I, it's still going yeah. I have my challenges with Alex and all that because they couldn't understand my, my accent, but now they're getting better. <laughs> they're <laughs> learning. <laughs> I'm true. I mean, two years ago, I couldn't speak to Alex or to Siri. I mean, they couldn't understand me, but now they're, I mean, they pick it up right away and they just go for it. I, I think it's brilliant, but I think that will be a great idea to do it in the short term, you know, because I mean, we're moving, we're going there. I mean, there's no turning back. So. Yeah. Smart homes are, are a huge thing of the future. Yeah. Um, and being able to, I mean, I, I look back at, I think all of us can say this, and it's funny that we say this now because we were all once, you, we were once high school <laughs> students listening to older people and adults speak about once being high school students, but it really happens very quickly. I yeah. mean, if you're talking the last 10 years even, where yeah. things that weren't a thing, Blockbuster was a thing in 2009 and yeah. have one store now in 2020. That's yeah. how quickly things happen. They yeah, it's a it, lot it's so quicker fast. than you think they will. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're thinking that right now you're the ones in high school, but in 10 years, you're going to be going into your late 20s. Uh, exactly. What will that look like in 2030? What will the yeah. look like? But if you're, you, I mean, for, for, for everyone, I including myself and all of us here, and it's, it's really the high school kids, you have to be on top of it, of, of the, these fast changing world technology wise and, and and new phones and new technology and new apps new software look my graphic designer i've been working with her for over nine years i never met her in my life okay she lives in pakistan i don't even know her face and she's been working for me for nine years that's how crazy it is that you can log in into into an app or you can go lo log in into a platform i have a graphic designer that you never met in your life. And she's my employee. I mean, that's, that's mind blowing, you know? And, and with this coronavirus, uh, I was talking to, to a CEO that he was saying that now all his employees are working from home. So he's saying that, why should I have an office that I can accomplish exactly the same thing with everyone working from home? So I don't have to pay the rent of the office, the telephones, the FPLs, the electricity, the, the all the extra expenses is to having a, the parking, which is, he told me the number about, he pays $15,000 worth of parking for the employees. Wow. So if you can do that and, and be as, 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 as profitable as, as having an office, why don't you cost, cut that you know, monthly cost of getting, and that's what's going to happen. I mean, a lot of companies are going to realize why should we have all this infrastructure that we can accomplish the same with much less. So that's part of the changing world, how it is, you know, it is moving so fast, you know, and let me, to all of you guys, I mean, to all of you high school teachers that uh, just think one thing, I'm, and I'm sure you heard this, that knowledge is power. And I'm sure you heard that. But knowledge, it's only power when you apply it. Mm. Okay, if knowledge is power, I mean, you know a lot, but you, if you don't do anything with it, it's just power by itself. Yes, without the application. Jerome, exactly. To touch on that really quick because I don't oh, want... Wait, wait, let, let, let me finish one thing. All right. And, and if knowledge is power, education is the superpower. And remember that. It's also very, very important. You know what I mean? Because you need to have the knowledge and the power and the education will become, the, it's the superpower. So you never have to stop learning and, and, and progressing and, and moving forward. No, it's, it's absolutely correct. And it's one of the things we're considering now, once again, with us delivering food to offices and knowing that a lot of people are considering, do we, do we really need to be in this box? What does the future look like? Um, a lot of companies here in the Silicon Valley are sending out notices that employees can work at home until at least the end of the year, if not further. Even if they come back, it's 40% occupancy. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to think outside of what's normal right now. Yeah. This company was a catering company and we worked out of my garage, which technically may not have been legal at the time, but you know, we're past that. <laughs> we're good. Um, 
it, it was exciting and we were able to bootstrap it and we funded it ourselves and uh, we failed a lot, but we learned a lot and we were able to grow it. Um, so yeah, don't, don't just look at what those traditional jobs or roles are or what a company should look like. Think big, dream big. I'm very excited to see what the next decade looks like for sure. Yeah. I do want to say, because one of the questions I have here does speak about long-term planning. And I kind of feel like now that we've talked about monkey wrenches and things that you can never plan for, right? Because no business had a plan for a global pandemic that shut down the entire uh, economy no. right? or not the, not the entire, but let's say 40% of the economy. Um, what, what should a startup's approach to long-term planning be? Um, with this as context, right? Because the rules six months ago are very different than the reality today. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, Jerome, if you can jump in. Yeah, I'd say it's an interesting question. And, and to your point, six months ago, I probably would have had a much different answer than I have today. Yeah. I think one of the things that's made me successful is I evaluate what's going on each month, each quarter. I have goals for the year, but you have to be flexible enough to know when things aren't going well. But that's also looking outside of yourself and being aware of what others are doing and keep an eye on your competition. Um, so I don't know if I have a concrete answer. I do know that as much as we can, we need to be ready for the unexpected. Um, it's amazing how some large organizations have fumbled taking care of their employees yeah. or uh, securing their assets. So you, it, it's tough to plan for the unexpected, but if this has taught us anything, it's we never know and we need to be ready. Um, from a personal standpoint, um, my wife and I, uh, we own our own home or we're making payments towards it. So in 27 years, we'll own it. Um, and at this point, if we needed to, we have mm -hmm. a year worth of bills put up. Um, and it's been some sacrifice. We haven't done some of the fun we want to do, but we had a goal and we stuck to it. So I, I think you need to be ready for now, but you also do need to look forward and, you know, what could this look like? You know, what should be prepared for? Um, I don't want to be laid off, but if that happens, I still can feed my four kids and, and that means a lot to me. Um, so whatever that means translate into a business perspective, definitely have to have some contingency plans in place. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think that's a great point, uh, Jerome. I think one of the thing is uh, as up to, you know, January of this year, February of this year, you know, we're projecting a year from now, what, you know, where are expectations, how to grow, what should we do, how many people should we hire and all that. Now it's on a weekly basis, which is unprecedented. Mm. I mean, and I've never seen in the history of, of the world, <laughs> you know, even though if you go back a hundred years ago, but take this as a learning experience and, 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 you know, I've been through 2008 financial crisis. I've been through 9-11 and all that. And you never know. A anything ca can throw, throw, throw us off completely. And one of the most important things is that what I learned through my business failures and, and, and the ones that I succeeded with. It's every time I have uh, my businesses, let's say, which I think you should, you should take this in life too. Let's say you always need to have what I call a freedom fund, which is a separate business account or, or personal account where I don't touch that money. That's money in case of an emergency. And that money has to be enough for me as a person to survive for, let's say I spend a thousand dollars a month. So I need to have at least $6,000 saving that fund which I don't even see. When I log in into my bank account, I don't even see it. It's called my freedom hidden account where I put money every single month and then I know that I'm covered for six months in case I lose my job, a pandemic happens like that because even though we haven't lost our jobs, Jerome or mine, I was out of work. I was at home for two months, two and a half months, you know, without making any money and nobody knew what, what was going to happen in the short term. This week here in, in Florida, we're reopening and all that, but we don't know what's going to happen. So that's very important in your personal life and in your business. In your business, you always have to save at least 20% of what you make and put it in a separate account. Just in case it happened to me on my retail store in, uh, when was it, uh, three, four years ago, we got hit by a hurricane and we got 
almost two feet of water inside the store. We lost almost half a million dollars worth of merchandise. And we were shut down for two months because we have to take the fungus and mildew out of the walls and change floors and throw away clothing and shoes and all that. It actually was a, a um, sporting goods store. Uh, thank God the insurance stepped in and, and they give us what we'll have lost. But you never know what's going to happen. It's, for us living in South Florida, we're sort of accustomed, you know, like, like we've got to get ready for hurricanes and all that. But in California with earthquakes, you never know. They're always talking about the big one is coming, the big one is coming. And you never know what's going to happen. So I always tell everybody, have your freedom, freedom, freedom account and spend and, and live within your means, which is very, very difficult in this country. You know, if you make $1,000, spend 700 Save 200 and have those extra 100 to do whatever you want. You know what I mean? But know how much money you need to spend every month and don't use credit cards. Stay away from debt. Don't, don't get into debt, especially when you're young, because when you get into that, that, that role, it's very, I was there, okay? I was there and, and I'll tell you a short story, but in uh, 1996, I graduated from, co from college. I had the perfect job. It was an amazing job, six figure salary. I was, I was in heaven. It was May, May 6, 1996. I met this wonderful girl on a club, go out with her, she picks me up next day. We drive down the, down the street. We hit a telephone pole right in the middle. I break my two legs, ended up in the hospital. I was um, on a wheelchair for six months. And you never know when life can change like that. You never know. I was up to here, $37,000 worth of uh, credit cards. I had $1,000 in my back account. I was, I, was, I was destroyed economically, physically, and, and, and mentally. So you never know. So live within your means save money, have that freedom account and grow from there. Okay. That's my, my, my su suggestion to you, all of you guys. And I just want to point out really quick before I let Jerome uh, step in. This is not just about business. This is great life advice. It is. It is. But in business too, because I, I mean, my business that I fail, if you, let's say uh, in my retail store, you know, we make 2000, an average two, $2,000. I mean, and for you guys, Let's do the math. Two thousand dollars worth of sales every month, every day, times thirty, so sixty thousand dollars, right? Half of that goes to the, to pay for merchandise. So you're actually making thirty thousand dollars in income, right? So my 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 discussions with my partner, who was the one who put the money for the for you know for the big majority, he was a majority owner. He started to take that money out to, for his own expenses. But we're our operating cost. I hope you guys know what's operating cost. It's, it's how much money you need to open the door of the business for you to run the business. The most, the, the most expensive one is payroll, pay to your employees. Then are all the expenses, internet, FPL, uh, insurance, blah, blah, blah. We had to spend every month, we had to spend $37,000 worth of operating cost. Just to open the doors, we need to have we, we have to produce $37,000 worth of, in, uh, of sales. If you're making $30,000, you are losing money. You're losing $7,000 a month. So you're already bankrupt. I mean, if you don't change that, if you don't either start spending less or selling more, you're done. You're bankrupt. What happened to Neiman Marcus nowadays, if you guys read the news, um, JCPenney, they just declared bankruptcy this, this, this week. Why? Because if, if these big, big stores, they, their sales, they drop by 5%, 10%, you're done because your operating cost, it's so, so big that you go bankrupt. And that, that's what happens when you grow too much. You know, you, it, it's all about the numbers and it's all about sales. Going back to Jerome, it's all about you got to sell, 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 and sell. And if you don't sell enough, you have to spend less. And that's what it is in life too. Personal life and, and business life, you know, it's, 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 you can spend business. more than what you make. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I think one of the things I wish I would have known is, especially early on, it's almost like you're running a marathon with yourself. And as you're yeah. running with that baton, you're handing it off to yourself in the future. So everything that you're doing today is going to impact you later, both positively and negatively. 
Yeah. And that's taking on student loans and how much you want to take on there. Um, I've been very lucky that my wife and I are like-minded. We don't spend anything on a credit card. We can't pay off each month. Um, our credit score has been really good because we paid our bills on time. And if you want to self-fund a company or you want to get low interest rates, I mean, we bought a Ford Expedition with zero interest on the car, which is thousands of dollars we didn't have to spend because we made good decisions early on. Uh, so definitely be mindful of what you're doing, how you're doing, and ask for help for those of us that have been through it. I, yeah. Please feel free to share my LinkedIn with everybody. I'm happy to answer questions or be a support. Uh, but just be as mindful as you can that each day you're you're setting that table for yourself the next day to either feast at or to to want more. Yeah. And 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 I think one of the things that it's lacking in in, in school, sadly, it's financial education. And and I can tell you that now at my age, but when I was in high school, I didn't know that I had to pay taxes. Why are they taking money out of me? I mean, I didn't know how to <laughs> you know balance my bank account. I don't know how much money I need to make to go and, and live by myself. I had this conversation with my stepdaughter. She's 22, she wants to go and live by herself. So we sat down and said, okay, how much money you need you need to live by yourself? Oh, I don't know. You know, we pay for the telephone bill, we pay for the car insurance, we pay for for you know for the food and everything. Well, let's say you wanna, how much is rent? Okay, a thousand dollars, okay. How much is FPL? Okay, another 50. So let's say you need to spend, you know, $1,500 to live by yourself in rent, food, car, insurance and all that. Okay, so now you, you have to find a job that pays you $2,000. Why 2,000 that I need only 1,500? Well, because you have to pay taxes. What do you mean paying taxes? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take 30% every paycheck for what? I mean, they don't understand that they have to pay taxes out of it. So for every $10 that you make, they're going to take at least two or three. So you're actually taking home $8 an hour. So you have to, you have to know that equation. And sadly, in school, they don't teach you that. You know what I mean? Not even in college. So I think financial education, it's very powerful knowledge that you guys need to have to really move into the world not only to have your own business and be an entrepreneur, but also to know how much money you need to spend to live. Because every, every day we need to spend money. And, and, and I'm sure uh, Jerome can tell you with the kids, it's like you spend money, <laughs> money, and they think money grows out of trees. You know what I mean? Oh, it's great. I want this, I want that. Okay, perfect. You know, <laughs> they don't know how difficult it is. Jerome, what's that like? Um having little versions of yourself that think that you're rich. It's terrifying. I, <laughs> being a kid, you, you don't consider where the money comes from, what it's spent on. Um, I try to balance not spoiling my kids because my upbringing, uh, there were truly times where we didn't know where the next meal was coming from. And I don't want them to know that struggle. That's one of my goals in life. But at the same time, I don't want them so far removed from that they take advantage or they take for granted what we have. So we have little systems where if they do chores, they earn jewels and they can spend those towards things. So we're trying to make sure that we're instilling in them some of that budgeting from early on. My 12 year old has a bank account with $255 in it that he made from a catering event we did last year. So we're trying to do little things, but it, it is terrifying having all the little birds chirping at you for the sports <laughs> and the shoes and the games. And, uh, so be nice to your parents. They're going through a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially, in, especially nowadays. I mean, the pressure is there and everybody's feeling it. And, and you young kids, it's, uh, everybody's under a lot of stress. And, and, uh, and I hope so. No, none of your parents have lost their jobs or, or anything like that. But it's, it's unprecedented times. And now it's when the most we need of you guys to come up with great, crazy ideas to really make the world better and, and create employment and, and, and change. We have the technology, guys. 20 years ago, we didn't have it. We have the technology. You can create a website. Learn how. One of the things that, that frustrates me when I, when I talk to other business owners, it's there is no, I mean, you have to know, I mean, you guys, high school kids, know how to create a website, how to build a website, forms of or, or internet payment. Uh, you have to know how to create a website, okay? Please, 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 because that's, that's, that's a new norm. Every business need to have a website. Uh, you know how to do a Google ads, know how to um, promote your business online. 
you guys are you're you're incredible great at TikTok and and Snapchat and all that. Know how to more, promote businesses on on Snapchat and TikTok and and Instagram. That's a new norm. That's you have to know where the eyes are going, where the eyes of the customer are going, and that's you have to know. You're using it for yourself now. You have please use it for your business, and start offering that service to businesses. I can promote your business on TikTok, on on Snapchat, or on, on Instagram. With your phone, you can now you can create incredible content, incredible photos of different products. You're doing it with yourself. You have your Snapchat post, you have your Snapchat, uh, Instagram post. You know, it's it's you know all that. You're doing it with yourself. You're selling yourself digitally. So make sure that you know how to do it for other businesses as well. And one thing that I like to add because I, and I'm sorry, uh, Jerome, you want, uh, I'm taking too much time, but. One of the things that, that you guys are moving into the workforce right now, and, and I hire through the year, maybe between 25 to 35 people, um, mostly young people, especially now in the summertime, I, I run a, a pretty big summer camp, which I don't know if this year is gonna happen, but uh, I hire about you know 25 new counselors and all that. And one of the things that we do when we start the, the hiring process, it's- Look at social media. They, they send me the resume, everything looks great on paper. I don't even look at the resumes. I go online and I Google the crap out of you guys, okay? <laughs> I Google the heck out of you guys, okay? I try to log into, and and, you're, and I always call, call and, I, and I try to tell all my employees, you need to have your, your, your own image, your own personal image, how you dress and all that, that's perfect. That's the way, it's very important how you dress because you make a difference on, 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 on someone that is trying to hire you the way you dress. Instantly, within 30 seconds, you know if that person, you're gonna like him or not, if it's gonna be a good employee or not. And then you have to create, which is the first time in the history of, of this planet, your digital persona, for, even though for the adults too. You have to have your own digital persona and make sure that you Google your name, what comes out and change that because today and from now on, employers are gonna be looking at your digital persona. Okay, it doesn't have to be your actual persona, but it has to be your digital persona. It has to be what you're selling to the world because people are looking at you through the digital social medias and Googles and, and, and going to your school and going to your previous workers' websites and see if you're legit and all that. So that's very, very important to have your digital persona created. One of the things that I have is my own first name, last name, .com, and that's my resume to the world. I, I own that domain and I put all my information there. So if you wanna Google me, just go my first name, last name, .com, and that's who I am, okay? And that's how you, I promote myself. When I put my resume, I put all my social media links, my LinkedIn link, and also my, my personal website, because people will look at that. They, won't, they, they don't care what you put in writing on, type it in Word in five minutes. That's, that's gone, that's, that's the 90s. That's the, you know, 21st century is the, your digital persona. It's very, very important, please. And it's, I love that we, you stopped there, you ended on that, because the last question was going to be about tips, resources, to help them with both business development and personal development. Uh, Jerome, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Yeah, the workshops I do, I highly recommend those in attendance go to sba.gov. Uh, the Small Business Administration has a very comprehensive step-by-step -step type of business you wanna do, funding, how to set up a bank account. Uh, it was interesting, I didn't know how to set up a business bank account and it's surprisingly simple depending on where you're located. For me, another one is SCORE. Um, I do some work with them here in the Bay Area, and they have very low-cost workshops, and they'll give you a business mentor one-on-one -on -one for free. And typically, these are older individuals that have had their own business, can walk you through their pitfalls, can offer suggestions. Uh, and then last but not least, just your local libraries. Uh, the one here in San Jose, although we might be a little more high-tech here in the Bay Area, no knock to the rest of the country, uh, you can actually go in and film videos in front of a green screen or get help with your resume, uh, use the computers. So there are a ton of resources out there that are free or no cost that I, I definitely think you can tap into. Yeah. Well, and guys, one of the free resources, the, the best 
ever in the history of the planet, the best resource that you have, it's in your, in your pocket, either the side or the left, which is your phone. Okay. You have YouTube. You can learn amazing things from the Khan Academy, YouTube. I mean, you know, you do it every day. You, you, you're, it's, it's part of your life. That thing when that, when you take it away, you start losing, you have hyperventilating when you don't have it. So you have it there, like going back to the same thing, knowledge is power, but only when you apply it. So it's very, very important. I'm going back to Jerome's point. Today, you can set up your company here in Florida for $125. You go to sunbeast.org and you can set up your own company. Then you can open a bank account. You, you need an A number, employee identification number that you, got, you can go to the IRS. Within 30 seconds, you can apply for that. With that piece of paper, you go to the bank, you open a business account and you're good to go, okay? Business plan, I can show you how to do a business plan, which it has to be how much money you need, how much money you're gonna spend, what are your operating uh, expenses? And then you can start from there. But the most important thing, going back to, to Jerome, it's sell the idea. It has to be the passion. And today you don't have to even put it on paper. You, have, you can do a video about it and put it on, on your own uh, YouTube channel. You know what I mean? You need to have your own YouTube channel with your uh, work content because people will look at your YouTube channel, okay? If you, because you're make, we're making a decision as, a, as an empl employers, we're making a decision on your digital persona, which is very, very, very important, okay? Absolutely. And I think that right there is the bow that ties it all together. Gentlemen, uh, Julian, Jerome, we do appreciate you to each of the students in the link in the chat um, if you're from the Southeast region, that's the Florida, Atlanta, North Carolina area, um, there is a link to just complete your survey, please. Just the feedback survey for us. Um, gentlemen, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time to work with our students. Um, a quick 30 second takeaway uh, that you wanna share as something that take, ties together everything that we discussed today, uh, Jerome. Yes, I want you to just be brave. Don't be afraid to try things. Um, you will get old quick, trust us. So um, it's a lot harder approaching 40 for me to try something new with kids. But early on, I, there are a few things that I wish I would have given a shot or the travels. Uh, so just be brave, be bold, be who you are and make sure you're selling the value that you have. There's something unique about you. And if you can show that to the world, you can change it. Yeah. If I will say something to you guys, Come up with great ideas. Knowledge is power. Don't 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 wait for for people to hand you anything. Okay, be be a go getter. Never never give up. If you if they take you down, you have to get up and keep pushing forward, and and use your knowledge. You have an an immense amount of knowledge that you use for yourself. Like I said, uh, do business for TikTok, Instagram, all the digital media. Help businesses to promote those things. Okay. Bring me some great ideas and I'll get you the money, okay? The money at the end of the day, if you have a great idea, is the easiest part, okay? But you have to put it together and, and, and do a good business plan, do a good, do a good video. Because the money, if you have a great idea, there is people always willing, looking to put money in great ideas. When Airbnb came up on to, or Uber said, oh, you can use your car to take people. Some people were saying, are you nuts? Look at where Uber is or Airbnb, all these great companies. Just because 10 years ago, they were crazy idea. Now they're common sense. So please guys, you have the idea, the money is out there. If you have the great idea, I'll, I'm, 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 I'm here to help you and, and Jerome too. And, and let's just put it together, okay? You, I know you can do it, okay? Apply that knowledge, apply that knowledge, please. Awesome. Awesome. I love the fact that you ended on that, by the way. The money is actually the easiest thing to get yeah. if you've done the work on the front end. The money is yeah. hard to find. Not everybody is struggling out there. There are people that have money to spend and are looking for things to invest in. And if you've done your work, if you really want to take your business seriously, and you've done the legwork, there is money out there, and especially in South Florida. You'd yeah. be at how many different rooms, oh my. places, um, these conversations are had. The greatest three-letter word, OPM. Mm. Okay, Napoleon Hill. 
please read it. A book written in 1933, how to be uh, how how to uh, how to be rich. Think and grow rich. Think and grow rich. I'm sorry. Yeah, think and grow rich. He said, OPM, other people's money. Use other people's money. You don't have to use your your money. And there is out there people to use that that you can use your money. So it's OPM, okay? Other people's money. You can use your other people's money to make your business a success. A success. Yes, that one. Thank you, Daniel. Oh, thank you so very much, gentlemen, students. It is always a pleasure to ride out with y'all for uh, this part of the portion of the day. Um, definitely look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow as well. But with all of that said, man, y'all enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I think it's going to rain again today if you're in South Florida. <laughs> Great times. Um, thank you, guys. Definitely be safe. Uh, if y'all want to hang out for us just chatting afterwards, feel free to. Uh, other than that, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Jerome and Julian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.